Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Dr. Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new Teen Therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. His latest book, Feeling Great, contains powerful new techniques that make rapid recovery possible for many people struggling with depression and anxiety. Dr. Burns is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. Hello, Rhonda. Hello, everybody, my dear friends today. Hello, David. Uh, Shut up and you can talk. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, David, and welcome, everyone, to episode 300. We're welcoming all of our listeners around the country and across the world. And today we're having 18 special guests to to acknowledge our episode 300. And our first um, three guests are Fabrice, who's actually going to be with us for the entire podcast, who started the podcast... And we're having Matt May, who is one of our most frequent guests. Hi, hey, Matt. everybody. Hello. And Matt is also going to be with us for the entire podcast. And we have the magnificent Jill Levitt, David's co-therapist in, in the marvelous trainings that he does. And on many of the um, personal work podcasts that we've done, as well as Matt has done a lot of personal work podcasts. And hi, hi Jill. Hi, Rhonda. Good to be here. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, I thought we'd start off by, Fabrice, you explaining to us how you got the idea to start the podcast and how you started it, and then I think Jill has some pretty fun things to talk about. Hi, this is uh, Fabrice Nye, for those of you who don't know me. Um, This is a podcast that uh, got started uh, in uh, October 2020. Uh, uh, Let me see. Um, was it 2020? No, sorry, uh, 2018. 20... <laughs> no, I'm missing. So, time, go, time flies, you know. <laughs> Let me have the, uh, ask time the pandemic. I, I cannot keep track of t- time anyway. Let me see. Uh, I can tell you, actually. Uh, well, I started October in 2019, 2016. so you must have started 20. Yeah, so October 2016. I just looked it up. Okay. 2018 or 16? 2016. 2016. Oh, okay. It's like if episode one was published on October 26, 2016. All right. Cool. And uh, so that's five and a half years ago. Wow. And I, I remember exactly how this got started. Uh, I had this thought that, um, you know, uh, for those who are not uh, therapists who are listening to this, David has this book called uh, Tools, Not Schools of Therapy. And this is not a paper book, although some some of us have gone through the trouble of printing it. It used to be uh, 1,200 pages. Uh, you know, Jill and Matt, you probably remember that. Rhonda, you may have even have had a copy of this. I do. And uh, um, after... Uh, uh, a lot of reformatting, I managed to shrink it down to about 700 pages, which was uh, put it, brought it down to just one volume instead of two. And this is the how-to manual for therapists. And I kept thinking, you know, David, you're giving this out to people who are on your Tuesday group, but it's kind of a limited audience. And why don't you publish this? I mean, I didn't say it that way, but it was it was kind of like my uh, my thought around this. And David was not very enthusiastic about this. I assume because you think you know, publishing a book is a lot of work, and this is uh, only for therapists. You'd rather do something for the general public. Um, so, because I, there was not a lot of uh, of uh, um, you know response on your part, David, uh, I thought, well, I have another idea. We could do a podcast. And David said, what's that? (laughs) And so I proceeded to explain to David what a podcast was and what we could do with it. And since David is uh, is very uh, articulate about explaining his concepts about team CBT, um, 
I said, well, it's going to be very easy. You know, I'll ask you some questions based on, at the time I was thinking on the different chapters of the uh, Tools Not Schools of Therapy, which by the way is still available, David, isn't it? Oh, oh yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So therapists around the world now can uh, ask for a copy um, and it's in PDF format. Uh, and, uh, and then, you know, David could uh, wax poetic about uh, all the topics that we've covered in uh, the early episodes of the podcast. And then we started doing uh, live sessions and we started having guests and this kind of took uh, a life of its own. So that's where it started. And uh, um, for those of you who are listening to this podcast episode and who have not listened to the uh, early episodes, we, we started covering really the basics, you know, the, the TEAM in all their details and the five secrets and, um, you know, what, what it means to assess resistance, although that was not what it was called back then. So there's been a lot of evolution. And uh, if some of the terms are being used now on the podcast are a little bit cryptic for some of you, this could be a good place to go look for answers. And now David has this very useful index uh, list of episodes. So if you want to look for, let's say, depression, you can find all the episodes that we're talking about depression and so on. So, so that's the, the brief history of the Feeling Good podcast. Nice. And I think part of a culmination was the 25 methods in 25 minutes, which turned out to be 25 methods in 50 minutes because we had to right. spread it out over two podcasts. But that was yeah. like at the time we were using 50 ways to untwist your thinking and, and we kind of flew through them and all of them a brief description of each of those techniques like individual downward arrow and all the others you know, quickly. But I, I was very touched by you're doing that and getting to know you Fabrice and you know I have so many beautiful memories of the Murrieta Studios which was our <laughs> living room and dining right. room table and just sitting yeah. down there and we made them up right like we're doing today just we made them up on the fly turned on the recorder and started talking and uh, the rest, as they say, is, is is history. But thank you so much for giving me that gift and giving the gift to so many of our podcast fans now. Oh, David, that was a gift to me uh, because uh, uh, I got to know you better. You know, I had uh, uh, been uh, spending time with you in the Tuesday group, but, you know, this is a group. And this was a you know, very uh, deep one-on-one -on -one time that we had together. So, uh, uh, you know, Doing focus work with someone else is is always uh, you know a deepening of a relationship. So that was really valuable for me. Nice, and that really helped me develop my you know team chops. True. Well, you know, um, I've been emailing people about get being on this this podcast, and like I said, we have eighteen people. And one of the things that that Jill said she would be willing to talk about are the ten things that she loves about David Burns. <laughs> so I thought this would be a really fun way to begin our podcast. Well, the funny thing, Rhonda, is that I'm cracking up at myself because this highlights actually the dynamic between me and David, which is that David is so free flowing and spontaneous. And we all love that about David. And then I always come in with my rigid structure. So I'm laughing that when I was invited to come on the podcast, the first thing I thought is, what am I going to talk about? And then I wrote out a list. So um, I'd love to share with you kind of a la, you know, David Letterman, the top 10 things that I love about David. So I'll whip through it quickly. And then I also wrote down, and I think these are a little different, but three life lessons that I've learned from David, both kind of in and out of the therapy room. So my top 10 list, I start with number 10, your unbeatable sense of humor. Number nine, your incredible work ethic. Number eight, your photographic memory for all things that occur in therapy sessions. Number seven, your intolerance for small talk. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, your courage in taking chances in therapy sessions, which invariably leads to breakthroughs. Number five, your unwillingness to BS in therapy sessions and outside of therapy sessions. 
Number four, your generosity with your time and your resources to me and to everyone else, all of your students around the world. Number three, your thoughtfulness. You're always checking in on me and my family when we're going through difficulties, which has unfortunately been quite a bit over the last couple of years. And I know you're there for Rhonda and for so many other people as well. Number two, your creativity and spontaneity, unlike myself <laughs> in therapy sessions and also in life. And the number one thing that I love about you, David, is your love of cats. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jill. Yeah, and that was maybe one of my gifts to you was getting you and your family into cats. I remember totally. when that happened, we were on picking oranges with your kids. And I think one of my cats was out there, Obi, and uh, and I said, you know, that you got to get cats. Yeah, you got to get cats. And my kids really wanted them, you know, partly from that and from other things. And we ended up adopting two kitties like five years ago. And they are like the total pride and joy of our entire household. And they join me on my lap for most of our Tuesday group sessions, actually. Thank so you, I'll, Jill. I love I'll your share, comments. So. I'll share with you one more thing, David, which is mm -hmm. a little different, but I, I, I tried to pin myself down to like my three life lessons that I've learned mm -hmm. from you. And this is like, you know, just 100% true. This affects me day in and day out in therapy sessions in the way that I interact with people, my family, my friends. This is like kind of woven into the fabric of who I am and 100% from my relationship with you. Um, and that is uh, number one, don't take yourself too seriously. Be open to criticism and even learn to love it <laughs> in therapy and in life. Number two, lead with empathy and not problem solving. Again, in therapy, in parenting, in life, in friendship. And my last one, uh, which I even mentioned earlier, I know Matt resonates with this one too, is don't try to be great. Life is more fun when you can accept yourself as kind of mediocre and flawed. And again, in the therapy room and across the board in life. So thank you so much for teaching me kind of all of these incredible life lessons. Thank you, Jill. That's so beautiful. I appreciate it deeply. Mm. Matt, do you have anything you want to add? You're smiling. I, was so I, I heard this was going to be a roast starting <laughs> with Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm here to get roasted, maybe. I, I'm not sure. But um, uh, David, yeah, I, I agree with everything that Joel just said about you. And, um, and I would say that's also the tip of the iceberg. You know, you, you've offered so much the... I, guess, I think it's number four, just the generosity with your time and resources. Um, you gave me so much of your time and resources and were so dedicated to the process of training me. I could never express my gratitude uh, adequately for that. Um, it changed my whole life. And, I, you know, again, I can't express it. So. I'll just leave it at uh, thank you. Um, those those were some fun times when I was supervising you and ha hanging out. Uh, the, the the generosity was based on selfishness and wanting to have fun. Yeah, I think we must have eaten about three hundred pizzas together uh, dur <laughs> during the course of that. And and there were so many occasions when there would be something off in my life or troubling me in some way. Uh, that you would say, well, do you want to take another spin as we were driving back uh, for me to drop you off? And do you want to take one more spin? And I would always say yes. And you would always help me with that problem in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah. Those were some great, some great times. And I can remember them vividly. You know, you'd be driving and we'd be going along some country road and wailing away it was it was a lot of fun it was so rewarding and i'm just so glad we have you back on the podcast now to share your gift of kindness and combined with genius with uh, so many of our listeners now and it's just kind of magical that this is happening uh, th thanks to you fabrice uh, you created this 
this really cool thing. And thank you too, Jill. It's been uh, I'm just so blessed to have you in my life and 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 all of you. It's just I just I just feel so lucky. I'm just sitting here with a cat up here. You can't see her because she's just out of the edge of the camera, but she's just sitting up up there, and I'm just petting her and. Later today, I'll take her outside for a little bit. She just loves that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, just, I feel like I'm in paradise. Do we have time, Rhonda, for me to briefly put in another plug and agree with Fabrice on just the importance of this ebook for a therapist? That, Absolutely, sure. Yep. Um, my understanding is it's still available, but has not been published. And I wanted to plug it as not only a, a, a book, a set of ideas, but also a set of exercises. And that when I've assigned these exercises to therapists uh, who are eager to learn and, and do, do their homework, they go home and they, they do the exercises in the ebook, I instantly see the results. I can see them from one week to the next improving their skills. And I just want, wanted to mention that it's a very, very practical as well as full of excellent ideas. Uh, uh, tome for learning yeah you can find it in the shop at, at feelinggood.com and if someone's listening and you know a therapist from india maybe and you you can't uh, can't afford it the to purchase the ebook or, or you know whoever you are just you know email me and i'll just send it to you for for free but yes if you do get the ebook um, make sure you do the written exercises because that's where 100 percent of the learning comes Okay, well, yeah, I was going to say, I, I was told that my shift is over, David. Uh, we got to make room for the new. I know you have a bunch more people joining you. So thanks for inviting me to join you today. It was a pleasure. It's, it's always like a little blessing just to have a chance to see you. And great having you here. I didn't know you were going to be here. And it's really exciting for me to see that. Then I'll see you tonight at our Tuesday group. And exactly. we'll have some more fun. Sounds good. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Bye, Jill. Jill. Bye, Jill. So now we're welcoming Angela Crum, Lorraine Wong, and Kyle Jones. Hi, you guys. Hi. Hello. Hello. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> so, you know, I just want to welcome you to, you know, Lorraine, you, you were actually one of the first guests that I interviewed when I took over the podcast hosting. I remember. And <laughs> And you made it so easy for me. You you brought it. You actually brought one of your patients with you. Meet with you, mm -hmm. and that was actually that was the first time anyone's patient had ever been on the podcast, and the last. <laughs> and so you know we trusted you a lot, and it worked out so great. Well, she's very grateful for yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And Angela, you were recently on talking about you know weight loss, and I learned yeah. so I learned so much from that, and it. Um, I actually lost four pounds after that podcast. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. That's hard work. Good for you. <laughs> Thanks, you. And Kyle, you've been on three or four times on so many different things, dating strategies, treating yeah. LGBTQ, and talking to loved ones who criticize your sexual orientation. So I just invite you guys to talk to us about what it was like to be on the podcast and say anything you want to David and Fabrice, the father of the podcast, and to Matt. Hi, Fabrice. Hi, Matt. Hi, David. Hi, Hi Lorraine. Hey, everybody. Angela, why don't you start? Sure, I'm happy to. Um, yeah, I, it feels like it wasn't that long ago that I was on, and it was really fun to do. You know, I came on to actually share about my own um, application of the Team CBT tools to managing health and weight. And um, when I came onto the show, I'd actually had already gone through my journey. And so I was kind of sharing the steps and we were re um, kind of bringing to life some of the steps of using some of the techniques like the devil's advocate technique to talk back to tempting thoughts and thinking about all the complicated motivational issues that keep us stuck in patterns. Um, so I, I mean, I have a good report. I've continued to sustain about 20 pounds down from where I was at at my height. And um, it's not been easy. You know, I, I, I think I have to keep using the tools, which is part of how this goes. It's not something like 
behavioral change. We don't do it once and then all the, and then it just becomes simple. It's always hard work, right? And so at times I've kind of fall off a little bit and then I'm like, use the tools, use the tools and I'm able to bring myself back um, to, to sustaining the patterns I'm in. But what's been really cool, David, about doing the podcast with you all is I actually have a few new clients that have come to me specifically from the podcast and I've just been a joy to work with. They're folks who heard about my journey, felt connected to it and had, whether it was a health change or some other behavioral change they wanted to work on and really felt like they could better understand in my conversation with you and Rhonda about how to apply the model and then just wanted some help in doing it. So that's been really fun. And of course, I feel grateful for um, you having given us these tools to begin with, or I wouldn't have, <laughs> I wouldn't have been on that journey. So that's my update. Angela, when I think about you, I think about um, the hike when you first raised the question, you know, should we have a certification program at the sure. Feeling Good Institute? And then yeah, you went yeah. ahead and, and set that up. I also think back on when you were a member of the Tuesday group in the early days. And yeah. one day you said, I want to do some personal work. And you were pretty upset and you'd had a breakup of a, of a relationship that yeah. had meant a lot to you and you were kind of shocked. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I can re remember that. And it was just, you know, I felt so close to you and was always so, so grateful to know you and for the brilliant work that you've done at the, at the Feeling Good Institute and, and also in the, uh, the Mel M Melanie video when oh, you right. illustrated that double standard technique. It was mm -hmm. just... Uh, you know, just thank, thanks for being for being you and for contributing wow. so much. Oh, thank you. It's been really fun to do all those things. And I have appreciated this community so much, which always excites me when new people join us as wanting to learn these methods, because it's such a great community of folks who help each other through all the different things going on in life. So mm -hmm. you've inspired a lot of people, David, and really kept us all going. Yeah, I can't see Kyle. Where is Kyle? I'm, I'm here. Oh, okay, there you are, yeah. I'm, I'm a little unprepared. I thought this was for your birthday or something. So I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when I, I think about Lorraine and Kyle, too, when I think about any of you, I think about the personal work that we did together yeah. and uh, on hikes. And I can remember practically verbatim all of those exchanges we had, Kyle and Lorraine and uh, it was just it's, it was a great way to get close to you and to get to get to know you on a on a deeper level this you know as, as friends I guess you're not supposed to do therapy with friends but by doing therapy on the hike we, we all became friends we all got pretty pretty darn close I, I was reflecting on the hike because we I knew we were doing this podcast and I'm sure you've heard this from other people but you know working with you David sometimes there's this placebo effect that people you know because we're working with David Burns we we're going to get better and I remember feeling stubborn about it like I was going to be honest that I still was stuck on this one thing and you just kept you were so persistent with me in fact we were emailing each other for a while there were these really intense exchanges going on where you were helping me work through my negative thoughts I don't know if you remember that oh sure yeah. and then we were on a hike one day and we had done all of the resistance work and of all of the methods, uh, the one that surprised me the most that it finally like the light, the light bulb went off was let's get specific. You got specific with me about what I had done with something and we peeled it away. And it's just like the analogy you use in one of your, I think it's in the ebook that you keep chipping away and chipping away on a mountain and then boop, all of a sudden. Oh, oh yeah. I remember that. Off. Yeah. And yeah. that's what happened. And I was enlightened. After <laughs> that. So I, I, I just really appreciate, um, you know, you're, you're, you're very committed to helping people. And it is scary to work with someone like you because you feel like you want to say, ah, oh, yes, I'm better. But I remember thinking, nope, I'm going to be honest here. And, and you just, we kept, we kept kind of just chipping away and it worked. I love that process, too, of seeing someone go into enlightenment. And your theme was like so many of us say, you know, I'm not good enough. We all have our own uh, variety, our own yeah. variant of that ba basic message. And but it seems so true when, when it's like being in a hypnotic yeah. trance and then recovery is like waking up from that trance. 
and uh, suddenly you're into a whole whole new world. It was just such a joy see, seeing seeing that happen. And you also make it easy to, for people, David, because you also use some self disclosure, and you're just like a normal human being, and you're very good at sharing that with people. And I think that helps a lot, and that's helped me a lot in my own practice with people. So I appreciate learning that skill from you. Mm. Yeah, I guess oh. I'll, I'll chime in. Can I chime in? Please. No, no, no. We just wanted you here as an ornament. <laughs> I know. You're just, you're just here for my good looks. They'll come yeah. over, over the podcast. I'm sure. Oh, Kyle. <laughs> no, I, I have just uh, been you know, so grateful to David and everyone in, on, this, on this call. I mean, Rhonda and Fabrice and Matt and Lorraine and Angela and especially David. I mean, I was just like was an upstart therapist, a graduate student, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, I finished this degree and I'm working, you know, with Angela and Lorraine at FGI and helping David out here and there. And it, it, it's just been such a joy to kind of have uh, like a knowledge base to work from and to feel so capable and so confident. And then to have the podcasts for like, there's this trove of knowledge, you know, to go to. I had a friend yesterday who was starting some dating and I was like, oh, I think Matt did a podcast on dating and Angela maybe talked about it. And, you know, oh, you're chasing, you, you know, you're, you're, you're chasing that person. You're forcing them to, to reject you, you know, <laughs> you've, got, yeah. you've got to play coy, you know, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> right. You've conquered death with the podcast, David. You're immortal now. Yeah, you, have yeah. all, you have all yeah. your knowledge. And then pe people say, oh, I, 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 I don't want to play games. I, I want to be genuine. And then yeah. I say, oh. well, to quote the, the Buddha 2,500 years ago, when he said, well, then you're screwed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or you won't be screwed. <laughs> oh, exactly. David. I shouldn't have said that. I, I, I take it back. Actually, that was Lorraine's homework after the pod, after the hike. Yes. <laughs> what? But that's another story. Yeah, that's another story. <laughs> that was Kyle's homework, right? Oh yeah, and it worked. I was like, so I had this, had a breakup, and I was so depressed and sad. I thought I lost like the love of my life, you know, and couldn't go back out there. And then David was like, "Nope." After we did a lot of good personal work, you've got to get out there, you know. And then I I met someone out that very night, and you know, had a success. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really want to know what that success is. <laughs> so, yeah. so we can thank David for the improvement in our sex lives too. <laughs> We can. That was that was my most fun thing when I was in private practice is helping people get out of that lonely single feeling, you know, like they're never going to find somebody to love and 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 show people how to tr turn your love life from from rags to, to riches. And it was always such a joy to to, to do that. And sixty percent when I was in private practice, sixty percent of my patients weren't in relationships because they didn't know how to date and uh, they'd gotten divorced. They didn't know how to get into the dating scene and scene. And I'd been such a gomer nerd as a medical student. And then a fellow I met this real wild guy who kind of turned me all around and my approach to to dating and and it was just always such a joy sharing that with people how to find sex appeal how, how to how to find love how to connect with people how to get close to people yeah it's a great area to work with people i agree because it, it's not easy for a lot of people and there's so much heartache and pain and then finding the right balance between even techniques and tools that as a community we can teach folks it's still hard they have to find their own style and their navigate that so it is it's a it's a struggle for people and a joy to watch people come through it it's exciting you know angela we haven't gotten around to revising intimate connections yet my book that's in desperate that. need of updating and get rid of all the gomerish parts and 
you know, bring it into the modern era. It probably yeah. never happened, but, uh, you know. There's still gems in there. If you, if, there you know, are. I encourage readers to, if you can read past the dated parts, like putting an ad in the <laughs> newspaper for a date, or, you yeah. know, if we could expand our thinking to non, like, heteronormative examples, you know, there's still great things in there, but I agree it'd be such a joy to update it and really, really make it um, more modern. But again, there's still some great wisdom in the book, right? And folks just invite Folks yeah, if you're lonely and, and getting dumped on in the dating scene, you might pick up intimate connections. It's just cheap. It's a mass market paperback. And I've had a lot of people say, because of this book, I'm I'm married now. It, it mm. changed changed my life. And uh, it's it's such it's it, those are, they're just some important tools. I never learned that stuff in psychiatric residency, but I learned a lot of stuff on the streets that's been very valuable in my work with real human beings who need help in the intimacy area. And that's such an important, like Angela said, just the loneliness factor. You know, being able to help someone meet someone or feel less lonely is, I mean, that's what the world is about in a way, human connection. You know, that's really incredible to be able to help people that way. Well, thank you, Angela and Lorraine and Kyle for joining us. We're going to say bye to you now. Bye bye. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate you. Thank you. Goodbye. Great to see you all. Bye. Bye everyone. Great to see you. Thank you. Oh, music looks like, and Heather, yes. fantastic. One thing I would like to say, this is Fabrice again, um, is that any movement, any self-respecting movement like team needs to have a soundtrack. In fact, the Buddha started that 25,000, 2,500 years ago, as you know, David, you know? With, oh, yeah, uh, he had a band. He had a, actually a rock band in yeah. ancient India. Yeah, that's how they started chanting mantras. And yeah. so team has its own band with, let me introduce you and give a big hand to Kermit and Miss Piggy. Oh. Wow. Well, for Bruce, gosh, that, that just feels so nice. It's... But actually, <laughs> Kermit, I think it feels great. Well, great, great is a good word. I, yeah. I just feel so warm inside seeing oh. Fabrice and, and David and Rhonda. And, and, and Matt. Wow, Matthew May is here. Oh, hi, Matthew. Gosh, he just waved at me. Oh, I'm turning pink. Wow. I'm already pink. You know, Lorraine was speaking a connection, and gosh, oh, yeah. there's a special connection here. Very. Yeah. Are we gonna Are we gonna sing our song, Kermy? Oh, wow, we could sing a song. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's about a feel-good connection, really. Yeah. Gosh, seeing Rhonda and David and your smiles. Well, I love that there's so many podcasts with David and Rhonda. It feels so great. The podcast is awesome, and I get excited when David greets Rhonda by name. Rhonda! Mondays we magically dial in their podcast and positively refrain. Someday our egos will melt like resistance with Rhonda and David and team. All of us under their spell, we know that their button is There really is magic in oh, there. Oh, yes. Hmm. Though we wish for enlightenment, our thoughts get distorted. We're getting in our own way. Thankfully, with resources like Podcast 300 oh, and tools and the DMJ. I like the DMJ. Now with the app, we can deal with relapsing. We learned that acceptance is key. Today, we're grateful for Rhonda and David, the podcast, the healing of me. Oh, 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 oh,
Are you hurt me? Well, 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 I kind of stubbed my toe. I, I might have even, I feel kind of hurt. Are, so, you know, you're hurt? I, well, are yeah, you, I'm hurting are you, my toe. Are you kind of, blaming me for hurting you? I, I mean, are you I, blaming me again, I, Harvey? Um, I wonder if we could get a little help here. Oh, we, we, well, we actually, there's some really good therapists here. Could, could someone invite us maybe, like, kind of paradoxically to, uh, to do some work here? Yeah, so that he can change himself and fix our relationship? Oh, oh gosh, I... <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to look, look inside in my oh. little green heart. Oh. oh, that's so sweet, Kirby. Gosh, what do you think? Yes, it's not that? easy being green. Oh. oh, thank you, Fabrice. That sounds so, so empathetic, so validating. It's not easy being pink either. <laughs> oh. uh, I'm sure not. Yeah, I think we both feel kind of disarmed. <laughs> I'm kind of distowed as well. <laughs> oh, Kermie, I'm actually feeling really warmly towards you. And, you know, if I admit it to myself, sometimes I think maybe I pressure you a little bit. Do you think? Oh, wow. Is that true? Well, well yeah, I think so. And sometimes I'm kind of passive. Oh. I mean, maybe that's kind of some of our roles with each other. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we're each... Creating our interpersonal reality. Wow, I gotta think about that for a minute on my lily pad. Oh. Mm. 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 Well, thank you, everybody. Oh, we're we're Gosh. so grateful for David and Rhonda and Fabrice and Matt and the podcast. Wow, we sure are. Feels so warm. <laughs> I wonder if they have any questions for us. Well, well, they may. Mm -hmm. we, we could ask. Well, I'd like to say for our audience that uh, uh, your scene um, monikers, Kermit and Miss Piggy, refer to some of our beloved guests on the podcast who've been on several of uh, our episodes, including ones about music. This is uh, Brandon Vance. Hello, Kermit. Well, hello. And Heather hello. Clay. Gosh, that's hello, Miss a Piggy. nice introduction. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> well, I feel so happy that you guys are here. Mm. I feel Me so too. warm and gushy inside. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Brandon. Flattered. Bravo. That was excellent. Hey. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Matt. <laughs> so good to see you. It's great. Great to be with you. Mm. Yeah. In fact, um, uh, Kermie, I heard that Brandon and Heather, they have a whole repertoire of songs about team. Oh, yeah. What? what, what I what podcast was that? Oh, that was one a little while ago, but there's there's one about the five secrets. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Aren't there some other ones? There, there's lots. Yeah, I hear there's lots. Yep, that's what we talk about in the pond with the lily pads all the time. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Actually, you guys, it was it was episode 160 where you sang a lot of the songs about team. Uh, oh, Do you have another song? I don't think we do with our... <laughs> Banjo here, unless you think so, Miss Piggy. <laughs> that would be a lot to ask. <laughs> well, what's it been like for you guys to be on the podcast and sing? Oh, it's been fantastic. <laughs> we can break character. <laughs> wow, I guess we are. <laughs> um, yeah, the 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 um, musical collaboration has been really joyful, and I'm really mm -hmm. grateful to to David for bringing Brandon and I together. We actually met at an intensive way, That's true. way back in like 2014, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then collaborating on leading consultation groups and mm -hmm. book club and all kinds of things mm -hmm. and singing. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really been beautiful. Yeah, I think one of the, the joys is the community that's been created around team and all the people yeah. that have come together. I know it's been a big joy in my life. And it, actually, yeah. that's what we've seen with the Feeling Great Book Club is that um, it's people connect with each other um, and, and heal each other. It's really been inspiring to see that. It really is inspiring, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> when is the next feeling uh, good or feeling great book club or whatever book club you're doing? When when is the next one starting up? September thirteenth. So, and is it going to be feeling great or when panic attacks or? It's uh, the feeling great book club. Yep. Mm -hmm. September thirteenth. Okay. okay. So we'll make sure we do some promo b before that. But the book club is a once a week thing for roughly an hour or ninety minutes or seventy yeah, exactly. minutes. Exactly. It's it's eighty minutes once a week, 
and it goes for 12 weeks and we'll have two times that people could attend so that people from around the world could, could find some time when it's during their day. Yeah, thank you so much, David. It's just been a, such a treat to do those book clubs and, and to see people engaging with this work. And sometimes people will be doing so much themselves and talk about um, recovering from depression that's been there for years without us doing much and then just diving into the book. So it's just such a, a, a beautiful book and beautiful tools that way. That's so neat to hear. And, and uh, many of you regular podcast fans will remember that Heather was featured not long ago on a podcast uh, or just the most most recent uh, appearance on how to handle angry and violent people. And you uh, modeled some beautiful use of the five secrets. And we've been getting fantastic uh, emails and feedback from people about that. And I've been forwarding some of those to you. But uh, it, it apparently it hit a receptive chord and uh, people really, really loved what you did, Heather. Mm, that's, that's very gratifying. Those are so powerful. We're actually both doing from Five Secrets groups to help teach people those those tools and and that is uh, different from the book clubs that's another kind of group yeah those are kind of short groups that are maybe six weeks around and we we're doing um doing them fairly often so we'll have new ones starting but they're for small groups of people like eight people uh for each group so people can really get attention for, for learning them i think five secrets groups is a brilliant idea and a, and a desperately needed idea because you you can't learn five secrets without practice with with other people if some of our listeners would like to join one of these five secret groups who who should they contact we'll put it in the show notes but if you can give a, an email right now people can jot it down and if you go to the um the feeling great book club there's actually a link well actually that's not true if you go to the um, the Feeling Great Therapy Center, so yeah. feelinggreattherapycenter.com, and then you'll see a link for educational groups, and it will be under there. And that, feelinggreattherapycenter.com, and then go to the educational groups, you can find it there. Who, yeah. who, who does this feelinggreattherapycenter.com? Who's... Whose center is that? Yeah, I don't know, Rhonda. Who, whose it was center founded is that? by Rhonda Borowski. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Um, just so you know, those, those, um, the five secrets practice groups are sliding scale. So the yeah. intention is to make them accessible. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, Brandon and Heather are Kermit and Miss Piggy. Thank you so much for coming Thanks and joining us. Thanks for the beautiful us. music. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>Well, that was wonderful. I I so appreciated uh, the creative lyrics, and um, and I, I'm just noticing we have a really deep bench of admirers for David uh, coming in, and uh, the next two are two of my favorite humans, and uh, I'm just so delighted to introduce uh, Lee Harrington and Sarah Hester, Lee and Her and and Sarah. Thank you for joining us. Hi there. Thank you so much for having me. And I agree with what you just said. I feel so excited to be here amongst some of my very favorite humans as well. And it's really exciting to celebrate number 300. Thank you, Sarah. It's great to have you and great to Thank know you. you and great to know you, Lee, and uh, to be able to re reconnect after our wonderful times when you were the chief resident at Stanford and I was supervising your work and then you faded off when you went moved up to Sacramento and now you're back in the family again and it's really great uh, having you back home again. Thanks David I feel the same way it's you've got like a treasure trove here of um, podcasts um, people and and um, hearts mind souls it's really Wonderful. I'm, I'm really grateful to you, David. I, I remember those times and learning from you. And um, I think one of the things I've noticed and cherished that not only does your, your work change and transform people's lives in a, in a wonderful, amazing way, but it attracts just like the most dedicated, um, hardworking and um, beautiful therapists. You know, it's great to get to train people with this amazing 
you know, heart, mind, and soul, and, and to be connected with them and work together. And I thank you so much for that. Also, your podcast, 279, when, when we did it, I was thinking, oh, this is, this is okay, but it's <laughs> not, you know, it's going to bring the curtain down or it's not going to, you know, set the world on fire. And then it did set the world on fire. I was really surprised the numbers of, uh, and the ratings and the feedback from people on that uh, podcast, 279 on goal setting for habits and addictions has just been uh, tr tremendous. So th thanks for that. And thanks from a lot of our podcast fans who really appreciated and benefited from that podcast. Thanks, David. It was fun to do. Yeah, I thought I thought there might be a little lukewarm feeling about it when we did it, but um, also felt like it was really just great to do and share. Hey, Leva, besides that podcast, you have a long history with David, don't you? Like, how did you meet him originally? Um, I was one of the residents vying um, to have David as my supervisor back in residency. Uh, I was a year behind Matt. Um, Hi, Matthew May. And um, I, you know, drew the winning lotto ticket and um, David was my uh, supervisor for a year of therapy. And um, like right when he was creating team, the agenda setting pieces. And I remember, you know, David sat with me seeing patients and or two or three <laughs> and, um, you know, using the BMS with the patients and, and the whole, the whole thing and personal work and group work and, um, yeah, and doing, working on the, um, the project for the easy diagnostic, um, system, you know, and working on that, the research on the, on this inpatient unit to get that, um, you know, normed with the skid, all sorts of fun things. <laughs> we know Jill, you, you missed this part of it because Jill Levitt was here in the beginning and she was talking about the 10 things that she loves best about David and, um, what a brilliant idea. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was going to get roasted today. Not so far. <laughs> but we still have more to go. But um, one of the things that th it seems like a theme that everybody is saying about their work with David, and that's my experience too, is that David does not like to stay on the surface. When you get into a relationship mm -hmm. with David, he dives deep. Yeah. And he's not a for sure. Yeah. <laughs> is that your experience too, Sarah? Well, most definitely. I especially think of that idea when I think about the personal work that I did with David and how quickly within just minutes he was diving deep into my soul and we were identifying hidden emotion and really major life changing things were happening so quickly. And yeah, so I would definitely agree with that concept. I have a question for you, Sarah. Uh, okay. <laughs> twice you were uh, brave to do personal work with your own feelings of anxiety as a mental health professional and to, to share it in, in the Tuesday group and then to let us use them for uh, each session was, was two podcasts. So you were really having your insecurities projected to the world on four occasions through the Feeling Good podcast. And how did that work out? For, for you did did your practice fall apart did people scorn you <laughs> what, what what happened when you revealed all the, I'm, I'm human too and I get uh, anxious and and some of the anxiety was very upset I remember you were even losing weight the second time you you were so anxious yes that's all true I'm really glad you asked that question because none of that scary fortune telling or catastrophic thinking that I was having none of that came true um, if anything, it's enhanced my practice a million times over. Um, I definitely was nervous at first to broadcast that, especially being a clinician. Um, but if anything, it really, really did, first of all, heal my life, um, which is a gift. It almost makes me, you know, want to kind of choke up right now thinking about um how much team and those experiences helped me personally. Um, I was like, I think two years ago now when that personal work took place um, and just also how it enhanced my abilities as a clinician. It was just, it's like the gift that keeps on giving, but um, I'm so happy to report today. Like I don't have panic attacks. 
my stomach is, I would say 99.9% healed. Um, you know, I don't obsess about every bodily sensation anymore. And my therapy practice is plenty busy. Um, I think one of my favorite things about all of it is that I actually feel very joyous and very confident working with my patients now, which has just been so awesome. Um, I think it is important to comment like, you know, one of the, I think, crucial elements of healing was me really understanding to the relapse model. There's so much power there to realize like, <laughs> yes, I'm still going to have moments where I do feel anxious or maybe now and again, I will have a stomach ache, but now I have a totally different understanding and I have all these tools. I know like if I have one of those things happen now, I have a roadmap. It's usually hidden emotion, which was like the topic of our first podcast. Um, there's probably something I'm not expressing or not acknowledging. And so I can identify and unlock my hidden emotion, or maybe I'm back to those like same thought patterns and being harshly critical or, you know, having negative thoughts that I need to challenge. And it's just such a empowering thing to realize how important the tools are so that relapse moments aren't scary the way they used to be. Do you remember, thanks for all that, do you remember the key to your uh, dramatic sudden recovery the second time we worked together? Um, I think for me, it, it, you know, one thing, I feel like there were several keys, but I mean, I'm mm -hmm. curious to hear what, what you remember as the key, but I remember how much resistance I had. That's right? it. Like, <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad I got it right, David. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was really, really clinging okay. to that way of thing thinking. Um, I just like had convinced myself that I had to keep shaming myself and calling myself that, you know, weak, whiny baby. Um, it was just such a deeply ingrained operating system for me. Self-criticism because yeah, I'm self not good enough. Right, exactly. And it was, you know, that stuff is like rooted in my early years and it was like deep schema right that i was really yeah. really clinging to um and i had a lot of really good reasons to cling i think part of it was hard for me to let go of like that identity that i was so used to but when i finally realized in that moment towards the end why i was having such a hard time defeating the thoughts it all just became clear and i was able to let go but it involved the death of the self, one of the That's great correct. deaths, be, be, because the, that was those high standards you didn't want to let go of. And that's the curse that so many of us have. I, I'm, I'm supposed to be so great. I'm supposed to be special. If I stop criticizing myself, I'll be settling for second best. And that's correct. And so you did have to settle for second best, settle for, you know, that you were just kind of screwed up. And, yeah, and then I was a little sick. Oh, yeah. Delicious. And then when you what happened when you settle for for second best and stop beating up on yourself? Bliss. Yeah, isn't that isn't that wild? Yeah, and peace and it's Yeah. Joy. It's like like yep, changed my life. Waking up from from the dead or something like that. And yeah. and yet we fight so hard against it. That was one of the memorable experiences of my whole therapeutic life and it was such a joy to 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 see that happen for you and the same for you lee uh, uh, absolutely we we all get into trap of i'm not good enough and and when when you're in that it feels so so real and I, it just seems like all of us uh and the Tuesday group or who have been in the Tuesday group, just that theme of I'm not good enough seems almost like 98% of mental health professionals really get afflicted by that at some time or other. And when it's there, it's horribly painful. Does any of this make sense, Lee? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> You're familiar with my perfectionism. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, well I'm gonna I, I know there's much lot so much more we could all talk about, but I'm gonna say bye now to Lee and Sarah and thank you so much for joining Thank us. you. Love you both. Thank, thank you, you so much. Bye. I'm just Love honored you. to be with you today. David, Wonderful to see you both. Bye. 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 And now we're gonna introduce Brian Wright. And Brian was on our episode two thirty-five. 
Hi, Brian. And Brian, hey, what's up, guys? Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we can. I just okay. want to remind our listeners that Brian was on the podcast about um, anger in marriage and working on five secrets. And Brian, you learned them so well, and you did such a great job on that podcast. And you did a lot of work outside of the podcast. Yeah, Tell you. us how things have been going for you. Oh, man. Uh, it's good to see you guys again. Um, hey, Brian. Hey, what's up, Dave? How you doing, man? Good to see you. I didn't know you were going to be on this podcast until I just looked at the schedule. I thought, oh, this is so awesome. Uh, have you st started a breakdance uh, studio in uh, Las Vegas? Yeah, I have. I have. In fact, I've been teaching out here about 10 weeks now. Yeah, yeah, we did, man. So it's good. Brian, right. If I just, I'm going to give you a plug because when people want a plug, we won't give them a plug. But if they don't want a plug, we give them a plug. And but, but just before you get into your great, uh, what you've learned and everything like that, if, if somebody out there has kids or you yourself want to learn break dancing from one of the great break dance teachers in the world and you're in Las Vegas, how, how would they contact you, Brian? So they go, we have a website. It's called webreakdance.com. So if they go we to that website, yeah, we break dance. That's one word. Dot com. Yeah, yeah. or on IG, just just we break, so they can look at our IG and messages as well. Cool, cool. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Well, Brian, tell us how did working with? I know we worked on the five secrets yeah. with your wife, how, and uh, with you on the podcast, and you did so much work on your own. Tell us about your relationship and how the five yeah. secrets so, have affected yeah, so you. And tell us the religious overlap, because not everyone's religious, but a lot of people are. And I think you've always emphasized uh, that the five secrets was very consistent with your yeah, own strong for, religious for sure, beliefs. For sure. I think uh, so. First off, thank God me and my wife are still together. <laughs> thank God. Right. Um, things are definitely not perfect, but it's, it's way better than it was before September 16th, 2020. So uh, when I first contacted you, David, but um. Yeah, you know, I always tell people, David, that um, I've been telling, you know, sharing my 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 story with a lot of people because it was so impactful, right? And I always tell them that that the five secrets reminds me of the the Bible scripture where, um, where um, where Jesus says like, if if uh, why are you worried about the the plank, uh, it, the speck of dust in your brother's eye when there's a plank in your own eye? You know what I mean? And I feel like your teachings the five secrets teaching you how to take it out of your own eye first right before worrying about somebody else so i think um i always tell people about that uh yeah like i said me and my wife are still married is is this the five secrets are no joke it's it's tough <laughs> it's tough it yeah. doesn't get it doesn't get easier but it is i think a lot of the work that i did definitely makes it a lot um easier to be um, more honest in my relationship. As I was thinking about this conversation, I think about this stuff like all the time, right? And like some things I learned. And one of the things that that I've, I've, I've come to find out is that using the five secrets, the more you use it, it, you become more confident in your relationships. And so this may sound counterintuitive and I apologize if it's blasphemous, but I find that I'm able to be more honest in my relationship with my wife and other people as well. And through that honesty, what I mean by that is sometimes you get into arguments, right? And you don't always use the five secrets, right? And before I... No, wait, wait arguments. a minute. You don't mean that. You mean sometimes when we get into arguments, we don't want to use the five <laughs> secrets? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Right. And you want to just, sometimes you want to just let the other person know. And I'll be honest, sometimes I do. I go off with my wife. Well, not in a, you know, cussing around anything, but, you know, I just say, hey, I feel this, or I feel like you did this. And funny enough, I feel more of a, uh, this makes sense, I feel more confident being honest with my wife in that way because I know I can always come back to listening to her and being able to take in what she has to say. Like, it's not where before I would go off, she would go off, you know what I mean? It would just go bounce back and forth. But now, when I when I do have a hard time using the five secrets in a moment, I can say the honest truth, just blah, vomit it out. But then I can come back and I can listen to her, right? So there's more of a of a uh, room to be honest and a room for error, if that makes sense. I know that sounds maybe kind of awkward or odd, but I feel like there's more room for error because I, I know I can come back and, and listen to her and uh, validate what she's saying and things like that. Does that make sense? 
Yes, absolutely. When you find the truth yeah. in a criticism, it transforms the situation. Yeah. But it's easy to say that. But then uh, we don't want to do that because that's the death of the pride, the death of the ego. And we want to blame the other person and say we're right and, you, and, and you're wrong. And it's really hard to, to, to let go of that. Using the five secrets is hard for two reasons. First, it, it, it's like playing a musical instrument. And it requires a lot of practice to play a banjo yeah, or yeah, a piano yeah. or anything to do it beautifully. And then secondly, in addition to requiring a lot of skill and practice, it requires a deep motivational commitment to, to be willing to, to let go of this idea that we're separate and to see the world through the eyes of the other person. Right. Uh, and, yeah. uh, and when you do life becomes really beautiful but there's this devil inside of us that says oh no you want to argue you're right they're 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 wrong and uh, i feel that the same way you do uh, brian and uh, yeah. I, I love what you're saying yeah so i think that's been a huge deal and then uh, the other thing is uh i've really delved into this kind of like using a five secrets on myself as well, you know, like when I'm feeling, you know, going through feeling like I'm not good enough, I kind of heard a little bit of what you guys were talking about before. But, if, you know, when I'm feeling those types of feelings about myself, or I may not be feeling like a good father, or, um, you know, just different things that may come up if I'm, you know, feeling overwhelmed, because I feel like I should be doing this or should be doing that. I kind of validate myself, right? I, I kind of affirm myself and say hey yeah you know that is true that you're feeling this and this thing did happen and then i give myself empathy and the most powerful part is just by repeating back to myself those words and i'll be speaking out loud i'll go on these prayer walks and i'm literally speaking out loud in two different not two different voices but like i'm speaking as two different voices right like one as a therapist and one as myself and just by me literally saying out loud affirming myself there's this calmness that comes immediately. It's, oh, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Just by telling myself, oh, yeah, Brian, like, you do feel, you know, you are feeling sad because you had this interaction with your employee or because you fear this certain thing happening to you financially or, you know, just saying it, there's like a, a, a affirmation that happens within my within my spirit. And it's it's really cool. And then I kind of go through asking myself questions and like this whole self therapy thing is pretty it's pretty gnarly. Yeah, and, and like so many others who have been on the show today, most of whom are therapists, you're you're for the general public, but it's exactly the same with you, that sometimes you tell yourself that you're not good enough and you criticize yeah. yourself. I remember when yeah, we were yeah. talking about the break dancing and yeah. you're <laughs> thinking, well, I'm yeah. not a good enough break, break dancer, and we're all saying right. I'm not a good enough uh, therapist, but uh, right, right. I just love you, Brian, and I, I, it's just it's you, inspiring. It's inspiring what what your voice is a strong voice yeah no thank you yeah you and Rhonda. it was you know it's been really great just kind of going back and forth with you guys and you guys helping me out and Rhonda, you telling about your son and him using the, <laughs> the five secrets himself and his profession and how it's helping him and you know um yeah it's 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 an amazing tool and it's it's really helped me a lot and um yeah, it's just I'm still trying to learn this empathy thing. It's so tough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's so tough, but it's it's good. It, it does, like you said, it does require a lot of practice. And um, so me and my wife try to have these. I don't know if I said this on the last podcast, but we have these talk times. We're supposed to do them daily. We have seasons we do, seasons we don't. But we kind of meet and we have 10 minutes each to kind of share. And that's kind of when I practice, you know, the five secrets, as does she, you know. But, you know, that's when I, I practice. And I notice the more we're doing it, you know, consistently, it's easier to do it. But, yeah, it's a tool. It's kind of a use it or lose it kind of thing, you know. Cool. So, yeah. Well, Brian, well, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank yeah, you so much sure. for practicing the five secrets and sharing your experience with us. Yeah, and absolutely, guys. We're going to say bye now, and we'll see you on maybe another podcast that's all yours. Yeah, for sure, guys. Well, have a good rest of you guys' day. Good to see you oh, guys. Okay, awesome. Now, uh, I'm a little confused here temporarily because uh, I see both Mark Noble is here, who I'm thrilled to see, well, and gonna, also Mark Taslimi. Yeah, we're going to introduce them as they're scheduled. Oh, okay. And where is Mark? Oh, where is Mark Taslimi scheduled? Well, just hang on. You'll You'll see when it happens. Okay, cool.
I'll shut what up. What happened as it's supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Cool. Hey, Ron, in, in a disorganized fashion. Exit out now. Did you want me to exit out now? Yes. Okay. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, Brian. Good to see you. Bye. So um, I'll be introducing our next two guests. Oh, and, and uh, there's Ty in too. We do have an all-star cast today. It's just, uh, you know, I cannot believe it. Uh, our One of our next two guests is Tyann Truong. And uh, Tyann is uh, a therapist. Uh, she's a level five team CBT therapist and trainer. And she was the very first uh, team CBT therapist in Oklahoma. Uh, she's the owner of uh, Lasting Change Therapy, a uh, team CBT group practice in Oklahoma who specializes in uh, anxiety treatment for women. She's been on uh, three of our podcasts on uh, causes and cures for the postpartum depression and anxiety. And uh, another one that was uh, quite uh, um, popular, how to get laid. <laughs> and uh, finally, <laughs> podcast 283, the O of OCD. So uh, welcome, Tayan uh, Tron. Thank you so much uh, for having me. Yes, we're glad to have you. And uh, our other guest is uh, also a very eminent guest. As this is Dr. Mark Noble. He's a pioneering researcher in the field of stem cell biology. Uh, his lab has made major contribution in multiple areas of research. And uh, most notably, he's been on podcast 100, among others, called The Art of Micro Neurosurgery. And he wrote this uh, wonderful piece about how Team CBT is like micro neurosurgery uh, using his uh, extensive uh, experience in uh, um, neurobiology. So welcome, uh, Mark. It's great to have you here. It's so nice to see you all. Happy 300th podcast. What a wonderful achievement. Yes. Thank you, Mark. And before we go too much further, like I, again, I want to plug something of yours just so we don't forget it at the end. But I re recently received this fantastic document that you wrote, Mark, and I'm partway through it. What I've seen so far is just fabulous. And if people would like, can you just... T tell tell people about this new fantastic manual that you've written and how they would access it if they would like to. Sure. The, the goal was to get, get Team CBT summarized in six pages, to have something that would be very accessible for new clients who are so confused when they see the so many differences between Team CBT and types of psychotherapy that they've learned about before. So to break it down to its most basic form and to do that at a, at a ninth grade reading level so that it would be readily accessible. And um, we can, we're distributing it in, in, in many ways, like everything I write at this stage, it's all under Creative Commons license, freely available to everybody. Um, we've distributed it through Rhonda's Wednesday group, and people are giving it out to their clients and sending it to their friends, and we can set up a link, David, on your site if you like, and um, tie in from your center and from, I, where, wherever, wherever it might be useful. That's the goal is to help make it easier for people to understand this marvelous therapeutic approach that is so creative and so different. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I should say one of the big things since seeing you last is doing a, a session with Tyan, which was just such a treat. Oh my goodness, that was such a pleasure to talk together about team CBT and brain function and anything else that came up. So Diane, I'm so grateful to you for that invitation. Yeah, it was um, just a, a true delight to have Dr. Noble on. He just shared all things about the brain and team CBT and it has just received a lot of wonderful feedback. So um, I could share the link with you as well, um, Dr. Burns, for people to watch that that webinar. Thank and you, I've, yes. I've outlined it too for people to just click on various topics that they're interested in in relation to Team CBT and the brain. 
one thing I wanted to mention to you, Tyann, uh, we've been getting so many requests for part two of your last podcast on the O of OCD. Uh, would, would you want to do a part two? Um, yeah, um, I'd be honored to. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm actually looking into a lot of different other forms of treatment for OCD at this time. So maybe once I consolidate all of the knowledge, I can come back on to share. Okay, because you were a big hit and always are, and you're always fantastic. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, and Tyanne, I'd love to. I'd love to chat with you about the O and rumination, and mm. uh, so much. So much to discuss there in terms of of brain function. You know, I, am, I, I, yeah. I just got to say that that for this podcast is so special for the both of us because mm-hmm. Tyanne, you've never even you've, you've never been to California. I, I've, you know, I'm not a therapist, so I've learned so much from being able to listen to these podcasts and it's been so enormously helpful it's an incredible achievement you know Fabrice Star had the great idea to start it and um the, the podcasts that Fabrice did with David were um set the foundation so anybody who wants to learn team can go and start at 001 and learn along with David and Fabrice about team therapy and, you know, your additions, uh, Mark and Tyann, just added richness to the learning of team for people. Yeah. Yeah, I think Team CBT has been just truly life-changing for so many of us, not just us as practitioners in our practice, but um, in our own personal lives as well. And so I just want to give a sincere thank you to all of you for making it accessible, of course, for Dr. Burns for creating this beautiful approach. Um, Dr. Noble has really, I think, grounding us and understanding it on a deeper level with introducing neuroscience into it. And of course, uh, Fabrice and Rhonda and um, just hosting this awesome podcast. I haven't missed a single episode, so it's just really amazing to be at 300 Um, such a huge feat. So huge congratulations to all of you and adding, um, of course, Dr. May into this process just really added um, another interesting perspective on all of the Q&As. So yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. That that I'd like to really point out about the structure of team is that the more I work on it, the more and the more I understand about it, the more I'm able to go and look at the work of others. There's a lot of smart people in the world working on these kinds of problems and understanding how to take their discoveries and integrate them into team because it has such a a wonderful structure to it, such a clear strategy of, of moving forward is amazingly easy. I mean, right recently, I've been trying to come to grips with the incredible literature on the perception of loneliness, which has a tremendous impact on on mental health and physical health. And there's a lot of tremendous studies in there. And it turns out that instead of it being a conflicting view, it's a view that integrates with remarkable ease into the overall team structure. And that'll be something to talk about sometime, perhaps. Well, as a matter of fact, Mark, we're in negotiations to... um have you back on the podcast just by yourself to talk about loneliness so we can talk about that off camera and you know just really want to thank you guys for joining us and i know it's brief but say bye until the next time you guys join us <laughs> well thank you so much and and uh, is it right to say happy birthday i don't know but uh, <laughs> the correct, the correct celebratory phrase is i wish you just all the best for another 300 to come, at least. Another 300 years. <laughs> thank you, Mark, and thank you, Tyann. Uh, it's just an so honor, honor having you here, sharing this, this time with us. Really appreciate it. All right, and I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Sterling Morey, uh, whom I've heard all kinds of wonderful things about during my training with David. Uh, and... Um, I'll briefly introduce uh, Dr. Mori. I've, I've been stalking you online. I, I know that you are the you were the head of psychotherapy 
for the South London at Maudsley NHS Trust uh, until July 2013. And I understand that you worked with Dr. Aaron Beck in 1979. I, I assume that's when you met David. I'm really looking forward to meeting you and talking to you. Yeah, thanks very much. Hi. Hi, Hi yes. Sterling. Hi there, David. Good to see you again. Good to see you, yes. Do you know the, the work that we did with Anita, over 25,000 people now have downloaded it and it's still moving fast. And wow, yes. That was, I think that was a, a, a really great experience. I think, you know, and, and, um, Anita, just uh, uh, feel it's just so wonderful that people are prepared to share some of their, um, that as therapists, we're willing to share some of our vulnerabilities. And it is so powerful because uh, I think that some of those things we touched on in terms of just that lack of confidence, that feeling of um, being a fraud are things that I certainly feel myself as a therapist all the time. And that universality is, I think, really I think this is what probably what people um, respond to and and feel. Ah, oh, this is you know, this is me too. It's part of the human condition, I think, to have this little bit of anxiety about how we're evaluated by others. Absolutely. I've have, can I ask a stupid question? Yeah, sure. The um, the the praise for you in the emails has been pretty extraordinary. And uh, the appreciation uh, from from your live work, I've I've loved you from the first day we worked together and admired you tremendously, as as you know. But I, I saw like even one of the persons was referring to you as this world renowned, you know, figure. <laughs> and uh, I wonder how that uh, how that 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 struck you that people are uh, viewing you in such a a well deserved. Uh, and and profound adulation. Yeah, well, I think that's <laughs> that's largely that's largely coming from you bigging me up, David. <laughs> <laughs> in in feeling good and in all the podcasts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, uh, which is uh, uh, it, it doesn't feel like me. So it's back to that uh, that sense that we you know many of us have really of being. Yeah, it's a bit of a fraud that uh, that you'll find out that um, uh, I'm not as uh, uh, as brilliant as uh, as I'm sort of uh, uh, made out to be by David Burns. Who's, I, I think what's great about you, David, is that you are so good at um, acknowledging people who you've drawn uh, inspiration and ideas from, <clears throat> um, which actually a lot of. <laughs> A lot of um, sort of uh, more sort of high profile therapists and and researchers and so on are not always so good at acknowledging, yes, I've learned this from from someone or this is a technique that I, I got from there. They tend to appropriate them for themselves. So uh, yeah. thank you for your, for your praise. Yeah, we be, the, uh, people on the show today have been praising the five secrets of effective communication that David created. My great genius created the five secrets of effective communication. Well, I got to tell you, folks, Sterling Morey is the person I learned it from. <laughs> I think I think it's also a mix. Remember, David, I remember when we were working together um, uh, there was a book called When I Say No, I Feel Guilty. Yes, I recommended that just last week to someone. Yeah, yeah. And I think that some of that got in as well. So oh, yeah. Like we, were, we, sort of all, we were sort of working out those things together in those early days. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, yeah Manuel's J. Smith, When I Say No, I Feel Guilty, a very book that's been helpful to so many people i read it and it helped me but melanie read it helped her our son read it helped him uh absolutely give credit where credit's due yeah yeah i think i've been sort of thinking about um so we talked a little bit about the way my uh sort of career and interests have have moved which have been you know somewhat different from what's how you've developed team CBT. But I think that one of the challenges that, uh, that we've both sort of been facing and, and a lot of, of CBT therapists face is given that we have 
a whole set of techniques that are great in helping people to evaluate the way that they're seeing the world, to test whether it's helpful to them or not. It's getting them to the point of being willing to do that is the key, really. And I think that's what you've, you've clearly done with Team CBT in really acknowledging the, um, you know, what's the benefit of this way of thinking that you have before you even start to turn it around. And I've been thinking, so how have I maybe approached it slightly differently? And, and it's about, I think, we have different ways of helping people to um, really start to ask the question, uh, can I see, can I just take a little step to one side to look at the way that I'm seeing the world? Uh, and so one of the ways that I find very helpful to do is through empathy and through contextualizing. So actually looking developmentally at how did you start? What, what happened to you that led you to see the world in this way? So, you know, if you were experiencing being very uh, uh, harshly treated, abused or neglected as a child, then maybe it makes perfect sense that you're very suspicious, that you have your antennae out to be sensitive to the way in which people might be uh, disrespecting you and so on. And so often I think that using that as a way of contextualizing can help people to take that little step, which is a similar in a way to, to how you've formulated that, uh, that step um, in teams of starting to acknowledge the value of the way in which, uh, in, in which you're thinking before yeah. you start then to challenge it, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and uh, also one of the, the three questions we ask in positive reframing is just that, uh, Ster Sterling, although not so much focusing on childhood as you're doing, but c can certainly be included for, for sure. Is like, given your circumstances, why might your negative thoughts and feelings be totally appropriate? Yeah. And uh, I love what I love what you're saying. Uh, I, I always love the stuff you say, Sterling, <laughs> and and as well as the way you say it and the humility that you that you bring to things. In fact, I think one reason people uh, you know admire you so much, and the same really for for you, Matt, and uh, for you, Ron, and for you and for you, Fab Fabrice, is because of your your humility <laughs> and. Uh, it it it's just such a, a an honor to uh, to know you and you know I'm just so glad that our paths crossed and even gladder that they're pass crossing again these days. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I mean, just on on the the uh, I think that one of the, the again just of just coming back to the childhood sort of um, context, I think that where that can be really helpful is where people um, are rather sort of because they've had very difficult experiences and, uh, and, and upbringings that um, they can feel that, C sometimes feel that CBT is a bit too simplistic or a bit of a sticking plaster or you're telling them that um, they've got to think rationally. And I think that's where actually saying, no, we can understand where this came from we can understand how it's a way of thinking that has been useful to you in the past and maybe also very useful to you now. Um, but while we understand that, we have some other techniques that we can use to help you change how it's affecting you in the here and now. Because I think that more insight-based therapies can often get stuck in the past um, and people can want a fix on the basis of having to go back to change things so what, what uh, uh, teams and other CBT approaches allow us to do is look at how the past is influencing what you're doing right in this minute through your, uh, your automatic thoughts and so on. Yeah. Well, Sterling, thank you so much. Thank you so much, every, every people who are, um, you know, are coming are coming from different time zones, and it's around eleven p, it's close to eleven p.m. where Sterling is. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for staying up and joining us on this podcast, give, Sterling, give, and adding your wisdom. Give Magda my my warm hug yeah. and hello. 
Yes, and to, and to Melanie and, and to Eric and, and Celia. So we'll do that. Thank, thank you. Talk to you again. Yeah. All the Bye. best, everyone. Bye, Sterling. Hope Bye. to see Bye. you soon. Great to see Bye. you. Yeah. Bye. 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 <laughs> So, um, you know, it's great that Sterling was bringing up things that happened in our childhood because the next two guests are people who have talked on the podcast about their families. If Mark Taslimi was one of our very first personal work podcasts. They were set, broken up into seven episodes and you did that the when first. the first. Yeah. And um, those were episodes 29 to 35. And you talked, Mark, about your your you know, it was titled Your Failure as a Father. And then we did a follow-up in one, a two-year follow-up. And Rose Markatik, you were on podcast 252 and 253, and you were talking about your relationship with your father and um, going through, supporting him through a pretty sad illness during the, during the pandemic. And we wanted to invite you both back on to... Let us know how are things currently going for you guys. What was the podcast like for you? Podcast like for you, and and bring us up to date on what's going on with your families. Sure. Thank you. Hey, Mark. Hi, Rose. Good. Uh, good to Hi. see you. I love both of you. And Hi. so, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Absolutely. Pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. This is just such an honor to be here. I feel like I'm with the, some of the greatest cognitive therapist it feels sort of surreal my heart's kind of beating right now didn't realize everyone's going to be here so this is really exciting um but yeah I don't know any of us you can start Mark and I can kind of piggyback after that or whatever you like Mark tell us what's going on with your family and oh. your thought about being a bad father <laughs> I'm still a bad father but uh, my my son loves me my grandchildren love me it's just amazing. I'm still the same bad father. <laughs> That's un great to hear. Yeah, <laughs> it's great to see your the joy coming from you and your smile. And same with you, Rose. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was so funny. I was preparing for this today, and I was looking at the Daily Mood Log, and it was literally a, a year ago on the 22nd of May that I had filled it out, and I was just reflecting on how I have been completely symptom free since that session it was just it was so powerful it was it, it was life changing I, I really really think it was life changing and was kind of reflecting on it and I think that the work that I did with you and Rhonda was so so special and it was like in a way kind of gave me gave me my life back at a time that I was really swept up in fear and worry and it was it was it was hard it was kind of scary and it was you were in fear of your father's imminent death and it seemed like he had a hopeless uh, medical complication after being a cat with nine lives and we talked a lot about the theme my favorite theme i've only meant it's the only time i think i've ever mentioned it on a podcast or anywhere but this favorite idea i have of sadness as celebration and can you tell me a little about how you experienced that and how how things are going with the, your dad now yeah no i i, I i can agree with you there i i it didn't really occur to me i think that title is genius because I was like kind of stuck in this and like anticipatory grief and worried. And, um, and then as I, like I spoke with you and Rhonda, I think it was really, really powerful. The empathy that you both kind of were, were conveying and sharing with me. And it was important to share the story of like the timeline and the events that kind of led up to that. And, um, and then there was a point in the session when it was like, it was like, it, it all clicked. Like you were kind of saying something to me, David, like, you know, you you could thank your lucky stars that you're crying this much because you love this much. Like it really just sort of was a powerful reframe for me. And it suddenly went from like seeing it not as like I'm losing so much, but that I have so much. And I have yeah. I've and it was almost like it turned it from a, a loss into a celebration, which was a total mind shift that I was not hadn't think thought about it that way. And it was powerful. And I think that those months leading after that, there was still a lot of um, uncertainty with his treatment. I didn't know what was going to happen, if it was going to be effective. But I, I that anxiety just vanished and I felt more grounded in it. And of course, like, I was just able to really 
spend more of my energy connecting with with my family and my dad and and my kids and and I, we've been really fortunate because he he had follow-ups for his his scans and his cancer after getting treatment and his cancer went into complete remission after doing chemotherapy for three months um doing things that he's been doing on his own just to keep himself healthy and it was just really powerful and we did not really believe that that was going to be the case and it Can was, I ask a really stupid question? Yeah. Did you ever feel like this is really stupid, but uh, I'm elderly now, so I'm, I'm demented, so I can get away with just about anything. But did you ever wonder if there was a connection between your, your loving tears, your tears of celebration, and, and your father's remarkable recovery? Yeah. I think that there is a spiritual piece that that's kind of greater than me, greater than my father. He listened to the podcast and I know he shed tears and I think it really hit home to him how, how hard this was and how much we love him and we care about him. And it really kind of sunk, it really hit his heart. And he tells me that like, he believes it, it was like the power of prayer that, 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 that has yeah. appeared and really, uh -huh. and I believe it was like his will is his thoughts as he was totally driven he told my husband, I'm going to, I'm going to fight this. I'm not going to let it, you know, get me. I'm, I'm going to overcome it. And he did like, and yeah, it it's so amazing. Much. Yeah. I think you worked a miracle through your love and, and Mark, your love shown through too. you two are such loving people, both of you. And, and the thing, one thing that you delivered to us, uh, Mark Taslimi was you were the first person to do live work on, on a podcast. Was that with you and me, Matt? Did we do that with Mark? With um, uh, Jill and uh, oh, Jill, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. and you, uh, and you, course, you started something new, and of course, we spread it out over seven podcasts. Now, when we do live work, we spread it out over two podcasts, but it was really kind of an earth shaking thing. I didn't know if it was ethical or whatever to do actual therapy live on on a podcast, but I think the, the, those your podcast and yours, Rose, was was live th therapy work, and so many others I think have touched. Well, really, we had our, our five millionth download just uh you know like a few few weeks ago and uh and you're you're touching the lives of of, of many many people uh through uh, and but your your thing that you did on there uh, i'm a failure as a father and suddenly miracles happened in your family too once your thinking and and, and mood changed suddenly it, it spread out to other people and that's that's a buddhist notion it's a christian notion it's part of every religion uh, islamic uh, uh, that that we're, we're one really and 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 when you find that joy within yourself uh, it 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 spreads to 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 other people it's kind of lame what i'm saying but i it's it Wonderful. seems to be very true it is true thank you yes that's been my experience, and as you have heard others, they're saying it's just not a relationship with the son, relationship with the father. It affects everything and everybody around the person who learns team therapy. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you're saying you had two aims in life. One was to become a fa fabulous physician, which you achieved, and the other was to become a wonderful father and to have a wonderful family. And you said you had failed, that you were a failure as a father. And in that podcast, that that suddenly changed, and that uh, uh, turned into a fantastic, loving success. And I was just so happy for you. Thank you, thank you, David. And it comes. Uh, I've been thinking about this. Uh, uh, I've always taken care of my sports and activities, and you know, my body basically. And since I have learned, uh, I've been in your class. Uh, my mind has become health oriented. And the combination of the two has really made life so joyful and life of people around me, friends, strangers in the store, anybody, they are, they're just enjoying looking at this old face and hearing my you know, scruffy voice. Uh, they, they just make comments that uh, it is so good. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. Thank yeah. you so much, Mark, for that um, is, that's so neat. <laughs> for bringing us to the place of joyfulness. And you know, I'm so I love the mind body, you know, connection that you're making and how team has brought you there. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us. 
I know you've been so flexible and easy to work with. I really appreciate you. And thank you too, Rose. We're going to say bye to you now and invite our last two guests. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 And now our grand finale. What did you, did you save the best for last, Rhonda? I'm going to let. Absolutely. And next we're going to have Elizabeth Dundanell and Sonny Choi. Elizabeth, (laughs) I've not met before. Uh, She's a certified level four team therapist and trainer. She helps teach uh, the Tuesday group at Stanford also. And she started and runs a treatment clinic for anxiety disorders in Alameda called the East Bay Center for Anxiety Relief. And she has appeared on uh, two episodes doing really powerful live work with Jill and David. And she has really contributed to to team in in that way and in her teaching. And uh, uh, Sunny, I have a special place in my heart for. I've enjoyed many a hike with Sunny discussing um, you know, team and multitude of other to- other topics. Sunny and I have a a little, a little um, uh, thing in common. We were both uh, working in tech before we became therapists, and so uh, we've talked about uh, what it what it's like to transition to a new career. Uh, Sunny is doing fabulous work uh, with uh, you know Chinese population. This is a a segment of the population that sometimes is having difficulty getting mental health. So thank you, Sunny, for, for doing that. So we're, we're very happy to have you both as our uh, grand finale guests. Do we get a prize? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll send you a bow that you can put around your neck. <laughs> And I always want to do this because last time Rhonda had someone who speaks Spanish, but I want to speak Chinese. So I want to say, Gong Hei Dai San Ba Zha. That means, mm. you know what that means, right there, you said you're from. Oh, yeah. I, well, it's because of my upbringing and uh, being brought up in Hong Kong, <laughs> raised in, you know, obviously I would know Chinese. <laughs> So no, we, Sunny, we don't know what that means. <laughs> Do you want yes, to tell us? Like, tell us. <laughs> it, it means congratulations for the 300th episode in Chinese, yeah. in Cantonese. Yeah. So, thank and, you. And, and all these people are my favorite people. Been there for a long time. Uh, uh, both uh, Fabrice and David are my mentor. Right when I first got in many years ago, and then and then after that, it's Matt because I couldn't go to David's things. So I went to Matt's Stanford uh, training. I have learned a lot from him and. Uh, yeah, it's been transforming my life, my patient's life, and I'm very thankful for that. Thank you. Well, we're Sonny. thankful and Rhonda, for you. Of course, we are like co- colleagues and friends, and <laughs> you know, let's not talk about all the stuff we talk about offline. I know. Shh, that's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you did uh, personal work uh, of, of a very revealing nature on on the podcast. We we did them in the Tuesday group, and then you let us use that for uh the, for the podcast did, did, did those how did that affect you going public with your in with your inner life being who you really are in a public forum uh well you sunny is that are you passing it to me yes. <laughs> passing it to you um it it, it actually in, it was a very positive effect to answer your question directly i mean they got obviously personal work is you know something that i really uh, think is a good component of team and and believe that all of us uh, you know at some point if we have an opportunity it's a good thing to do and in mine particular was an issue i had been grappling with for a long time and had different you know parts of it had been addressed but the work that i did with you and jill um, I have to laugh because today it's been about a year since I did that personal work with you and definitely noticed a, a significant decrease in my anxiety and just the way I ran my business. It's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, I didn't realize how absorbing the anxiety had been even like in the mornings to get going. And I can say I, I haven't had that for about six months. 
Uh, and even today, my office manager told me the dreaded thing, which she's like, you know, I check the monthly increase and they're dropping, Elizabeth. And, and that would put me usually into a state of panic. And I was just like, OK, so here's what we need to do. And let's take a look at that and with everything that's going on in the world. And so it was really I mean, and then I thought, oh, and I'm going to go to this podcast and I can tell them this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cool. This is a direct result of exactly the, the work that happened. In addition to people have contacted me both personally and professionally. Um, and, and I, you know, have you actually used it for people who come to work at East Bay Center? Um, people that I bring into the practice, I invite them to listen to this podcast for two reasons. One, because then they get to know a little bit of who I am as a person and who they're going to be working with. But two, to really stress something that I value of this model, which is the personal work and say, this is something that's really important and a very big uh, component of this work. And if you're going to practice this here with us at East Bay Center, at least, you know, this is this is a piece that I really invite you to consider and, and do so. And Ro does Rose work with you? She does. Oh, yes. you must be so lucky to be working with Rose, have beautiful, talented people like that who are so compassionate and so skillful. Right. Yes, she she is lovely. She's actually gone. To, she's in her own private practice, but now we have a collective going, which is oh. uh, your mental health space. And we're still connected because we're all team practitioners and we're, we're all working together. But yes, yeah, she's quite lovely. I agree. Mm -hmm. What was the effect of your personal work, uh, Sunny? Because you were very, very open and did a beautiful thing on the approval addiction. It was uh, episodes 214 and 215 uh, podcasts. Well, uh, I'm very happy that a lot of people approve of my approval addiction episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, uh, 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 well, actually, a lot of people, clients or prospects actually uh, resonate with it. Uh, a lot of children of immigrants who have a lot of similar experiences, uh, a lot of Silicon Valley folks who kind of seek career advancement as a as a way to get a, 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 a approval. Uh, uh, and a lot of people who are actually uh, going through retirement who say, Sonny, your, 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 your podcast really helped me realize that, you know, I don't need something to get approved from other people and I just want to live happily, which is what happened to me. Uh, uh, I, a couple of things happened. Well, one is that my relationship with my mom changed. Uh, uh, I'm not needing her approval. Uh, 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 and that's, that was a very important thing uh, because I'm doing things because I care about her. And sometimes when she still do those tiger mom things that I said, don't do it. I, I, I can tell her in a way that is usually five secret. <laughs> mm. uh, and then, uh, and that's important because our, uh, as some, uh, um, some of you know, my dad passed away last year. So I really had to have a lot of, Interact, a lot more interaction with her. Uh, and uh, I, in fact, I went on a trip with her two and a half day trip with her two weeks ago. And uh, it was very uh, loving. Uh, there are times when, you know, I still have to use five secrets, but it's uh, much more equal relationships. And, and uh, that, that's a big shift. Uh, and then the second thing that actually changed was I can't say I'm, I don't get anxious anymore because I think that's what I told my clients that this is my spidey sense. This is when something about to happen. So for me, actually, I had a two almost relapse twice since then. Uh, both times is relating to me choosing to shift my career uh, or my life toward less choosing stuff that would be recognized by other or approved by other, whether it is a job that is more prestigious or making more money, but like focusing on like just having my life that is connecting with people more and loving them and don't have to be recognized by 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 approval. And both time I had these anxious feelings initially, uh, and then after a few days, I said, wait a minute, that's what happened last time. And something good is about to happen. I just have to be confident that I'm able to swim in this open ocean where I can explore 
things I love to do without worrying about approval. Uh, and I, so both time I turn out uh, 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 much happier and more, I think more importantly, it's not the anxiety, but I do it anyway and living uh, toward a more fulfilling and happier life. Yeah. So, so, you know, one of the things that's a theme that everyone who has been on this podcast episode celebrating our 300th podcast episode is that people who have done personal work are all saying that the results lasted long past the personal work that they did. And that was also my experience. And so, Sonny and Elizabeth, I want to thank you so much for coming on to this podcast and celebrating with us and sharing with us how the personal work for you, too, has lasted and your great contributions to this team community. And I'm going to close the podcast now, thanking Fabrice and Matt for joining us and joining the celebration of our 300th podcast and giving appreciation to all of the guests who helped us celebrate and, you know, my deepest gratitude and love for David, you know, Jill said all those wonderful things about me. And I have a list of about 100 things I love about you too, David. It would have been too long for me to have said them. Um, and I, you well, know. let me say before we close to thank you, Rhonda, thank you, Fabrice, for getting the ball rolling on this thing and giving us all, giving me in particular the gift of the podcast. And Rhonda, thank you so much. You've been just fantastic. You're a brilliant uh, therapist. You're a fantastic uh, host of the podcast, but you're just a beautiful, gentle, loving human being. And I'm just grateful that you're in my life and all of our podcast fans uh, thousands of them tens of thousands of them love love you too just as i do and thank you, thank you so much and thank you sunny and elizabeth and and matt and 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 mark and i can see yourself both both uh, and and our wonderful dr noble and uh, i just I, I just feel so so blessed yeah thank you david Bye, everyone. Until next Thank time. You. Bye. Bye. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes under the podcast page. You will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non-therapists. We welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, the director of the Feeling Great Therapy Center. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.